eBay sellers, it's time for another eBay Super Size Sales video. The sales I'm going to be showing you were posted in my Facebook group the week of March 15th, 2021. Sellers in the group share what they found, where they found it, how much they paid for it, how much it sold for, show us the actual sale, and a little backstory if there's any interesting information they would like to share. So this is a great way to learn what sells so that when you are out there sourcing at thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, or even your own house, <laughs> you will know what types of things sell for $100 or more. Now before I get started, I wanted to go over an issue that some sellers seem to be confused about. My eBay channel is branded as eBay the right way. So I always want you to know the correct way to do anything and everything on eBay. One place there is some confusion is with the eBay picture policy. Even some YouTubers who share their eBay sales are showing us sales where they are using stock photos stolen from major retailers websites and that is absolutely not allowed. Maybe they don't know. There are a lot of resellers coming to YouTube to start their own channels and maybe they just don't know. So I want to make sure that my audience understands this policy because I get emails every week from sellers whose accounts have been shut down. They are banned. They cannot sell any more items because they violate policies. And this is one of the policies that can really get you in trouble if you break it. So let's go over what is the policy. This comes straight from eBay and I have the link below the video. It says the following are not allowed. The main one that we want to focus on is stock photos for used, damaged, or defective items. So if you are selling anything used, you may not just go on the internet and find a picture of it. You need to take your own photos for a couple of reasons. First of all, if your item is used and you're posting a photo of a brand new item, the buyer is going to be quite disappointed when they receive that because it's not going to look like the photo of the brand new item. So you want to make sure you take your own photos to avoid those INADs, item not as described cases. You don't want upset buyers. You don't want negative feedback. You don't want INAD cases on your account. So take your own photos. The other issue has to do with copyright and image theft. I see this all the time with anthropology clothing. Sellers that find an item that is listed on their site and they go there and they copy the photo and put it on their listing as the gallery photo. That is a huge violation. First of all, you cannot use copyrighted work without permission. That is theft. You are a thief. You are a criminal. You are stealing. If you are using stock photos from retailer websites, you are violating eBay policy as well as copyright laws. So that is a double whammy right there. When you see these photos on retailers websites, Anthropology, Macy's, wherever you're copying them from, what you may not realize is that company owns those photos. They have paid models. They have paid photographers and editors to create those photos and spent a lot of money to produce those images. They own those images. You do not. So these companies look on eBay for sellers who are 
illegally using their images. And they report you. And then eBay sends you a note that your listing has been removed because you have committed image theft. And you don't want to be that person. So the bottom line is take your own photos and don't help yourself to images on the internet because they're not there for you to steal to put on your eBay listings. Anthropology does not like it when you are competing against them using their own photo selling their exact product for a lower price, but you're using their stolen photo to do it. So that is a huge no-no. Yes, it is rampant in the eBay community, and I really hope it's because people don't know any better. I really hope that sellers don't do this on purpose, just hoping that they're not going to get caught, because at some point they will get caught. And if you have hundreds or God forbid, thousands of listings with stolen photos, you can just kiss your account goodbye and figure out where else you can go sell because eBay does not like that. So just be advised that the owner or creator of the photo can come after you and eBay can shut down your account for image theft forever. Now, you can use photos in the eBay catalog when they are tied to a UPC or an ISBN number. So when you are listing an item, let's say a package of light bulbs that has a UPC code on it and the item is brand new and you enter that UPC and the item pops up with a little picture next to it, you can use that because it's in the catalog. You're allowed to do that if it's a brand new item. You can also use photos belonging to another person or company if you have asked them and they provide written permission, such as if you are drop shipping and you are provided with the photos and you're allowed to do it. But if you're just out there looking for anthropology clothing or any other branded clothing that has photos on their website, they will never give you permission to use them because they don't want you to be their competitor using photos that they took of their items. So I'm sorry this is such a rant, but I see this all the time. And if you're posting sales on Money Making Mondays with stock photos, we do remove those because, again, this is eBay the right way and when I see sellers violating policies in my own group I'm going to remove the post and inform you that that's not allowed you need to take your own photos so again I'm just hoping that the sellers out there violating this policy just don't know any better because they see other sellers doing it so consider yourself warned that your account can be removed, not just that listing, but your entire account can be shut down and you can be kicked off eBay forever if you violate this policy. Okay, now all that is out of the way, let's get into the $100 sales. Okay, we're going to start off with Rachel who sold this Peeps Jumbo Plush 32 inch Purple Easter Bunny for $90. She paid $9 at Goodwill, said it sold in about 12 days. And you can see there the shipping is $25. Just a side note on shipping cost. When you are doing your research and looking at other sold items to compare the prices, pay attention to the shipping because if the seller has used calculated shipping, it's going to show the amount based on your zip code as the buyer. Calculated shipping works by calculating the amount based on the seller's zip code, the buyer's zip code, the class of mail, and the weight of the item. So different people looking at this listing are going to see different amounts for shipping unless she chose flat rate. So somebody one zip code over from you is going to pay less for shipping if you have calculated shipping set up 
than somebody 2,000 miles away. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at comps and look at what shipping was used on that listing. Was it calculated? Was it free? Was it flat rate? Because you want to take that into consideration when you list your item and not just slap a price on it based on something you saw on a different listing that could vary based on the buyer's location. Okay, next up is Amy who paid $3 each at a thrift store. I had seven tubes and all sold to the same buyer for a total of $91.91. Took three months to sell. And I included this sale because that's what can happen with consumables. Somebody is looking for it and they find it and you have a whole bunch and they buy all of them. So this is New Sealed When by Chaz Dean Styling Cream. And she had it priced at, looks like $13.13, .13, or maybe they made an offer of that amount. But it was for seven tubes. So how easy was that, just to sell them all to one person? Next up is Kim. She said, my son found this at a garage sale last fall. I paid $2 for it. Comps were sporadic, so we listed it high at $179.99 hoping to get at least $100 for it. After getting lots of watchers, low ball offers, and sending out offers, we finally accepted an offer of $100 plus shipping this past weekend. Took five months to sell. This is a Nike dry fit Kobe Bryant Lakers X-Ray t-shirt. $2 sold for $100 in just a few months. Okay, now we have Julia, paid $9.99 at Goodwill, took best offer for $100 after one week. 70s brown suede knee boots. So you can see there, she has her daughter modeling them. That's a nice picture. And somebody in the comments said that the square toe, chunky heel boots are coming back in style. So again, these were... 10 bucks at Goodwill and sold for a hundred. Next up is Nancy Schultz, paid $8.50 at a Goodwill, the only bargain in the place. Sold for best offer of a hundred dollars, buyer paid shipping. I've learned to make a quick stop at the hanging linens and bedding. Good brands like Ralph Lauren, Shabby Chic, and Pottery Barn do well for me. So this was a Ralph Lauren duvet cover sold for a hundred dollars and Kelly asked how did you ship it and Nancy said it didn't weigh much and folded easily wrapped it in tissue paper with a ribbon and put it in a plastic waterproof bag and finally in a tightly fitting lightweight box it weighed right at three pounds shipping was eleven dollars and seventy five cents priority again that's going to be based on where the customer is but also remember on large soft goods like this, space bags are great because you can fold the item up as small as you can get it, put it in the space bag, and then suck it down with a vacuum cleaner and really decrease the size, and then you stay under those dimensional weight charges. Um, you're not charged extra because it's so big. Okay, now we have Brian who sold these very cool looking Reebok shoes, sneakers, paid $9 at a garage sale about 18 months ago, finally sold for best offer of $100. And Rachel asked if those were adult size, and Brian said yes. They were huge, and a big part of why it took so long to find a buyer. They were size 15. So Brian's been around for a while, and he knows to hang in there until the right buyer shows up, which they did. Okay, George Kelly bought a box of doll furniture at an estate sale for $5. Found this Tammy jute box at the bottom. Sold at auction for $102.99. So he probably only paid a couple of dollars, maybe even less than a dollar because it was part of a lot that he only paid $5 for everything. And Ginger says, 
wow, great find. You find the best items. And yes, he does. I always love to see what George posts because he just, he knows so much and he is a great one to follow. Kristen sold this die cast truck from a free lot. An original box sold on seven day auction, listed for $75, but sold for $104.50. So she started the auction at $75. And isn't this an adorable little piece of history? Matchbox, Moco, Lesney, Milk Float, and Horse original. So it was free and it sold for $104.50. Jamie paid $8 at a yard sale, sold in 10 months for $105.97 plus shipping. The brand is Double H Boots Lace Up Western Style Work Boots. $8 sold for $105.97. Olivia purchased for $10 at a thrift store, sold for full asking price of $115 plus shipping. Took about two months to sell. This is a vintage Asian MCM, which stands for Mid Century Modern Lamp red floral cherry blossom and Shelly asks what was it about this lamp that made you pick it up I see similar lamps often but never pick them up and Olivia said hmm good question it was large with vivid colors the plug made me think it was old looking through comps made me think it was worth the gamble but I honestly wasn't sure about it Olivia is another one that sells very interesting items, high dollar items, and what she's explaining here is it's just a gut feeling. Sometimes you just know when you see something. And if you're new to this, that skill will come with practice. eBay is like anything else, learning a musical instrument, learning another language, learning a sport. It takes practice. So just keep that in mind if you're new and you're wondering, how do people know what to buy? Well, research is part of it, but practice, practice, practice is the other part of it. Okay, Lynn Merritt bought four cases of these tool pouches at Restore. I think she's talking about the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Four in a case, $5 each. I've sold four before at $20 each, so that paid for the whole thing. Sold six of these to one customer for $120, pure profit. This is a 10 pocket construction tool bag. So here we have something that's just very practical and sold for $120 for six of them. So maybe a construction company or a contractor that was stocking up. You never know until you ask the customer why they bought something, but don't overlook those very practical utilitarian type items because here we see big profit on those sometimes. Here's another one from Brian. He paid $50 at a garage sale on Saturday and sold for $119.99 in one day. This is a Wi-Fi thermostat. So I'm showing you this one because while the purchase price was not cheap, he flipped it for twice what he paid in a very short period of time. So those types of items are quite desirable. Margaret, free porch pickup. I'm guessing from Facebook Marketplace. Sold in two and a half months. This is an antique iridescent blue butterfly wing tray with inlaid border. That is gorgeous. And she got it free. It sold for $125. Ginger said, nice flip. I love Ginger. She just comments on everybody's sales. <laughs> and you can see that she's going through all the sales and studying them. So. It shows because Ginger sells great items too. Okay, and then Margaret replied with always amazed at what I never knew. 
Jessica Wolf said beautiful and Margaret said my friend told me it was way gross I'll take gross any day right the weirder the better go for it what do you have to lose if it's free so free and sold for hundred and twenty five dollars okay Wendy Kruger paid ten dollars at a thrift sale sold for hundred and twenty five dollars plus international shipping took three months this is a vintage Carlisle Fabergé egg rectangular silk scarf it sold for hundred and twenty five dollars this is one of those high dollar accessories that is hiding in plain sight so if you're not looking in all those little bins and baskets and hangy things at the end of the aisles um, this is where those are going to be they're just out there hiding in plain sight and maybe newer pickers don't realize those things that cost 50 cents a dollar at the thrift store in the accessories department can sell for this kind of money so here's the proof Lewis purchased for $2.99 at Savers couldn't find any comps for this exact size and style so I listed high at $200 sold on best offer after about two months this is a Rosenthal black vase and if you look at it it's just so plain it's just a cylindrical black probably porcelain or ceramic vase with some bumps on the side <laughs> um, sorry pearl drops it looks very plain and who would expect that it would sell for over a hundred dollars so you've really got to look at everything okay George Kelly is back he bought six of these blessing nun dolls at an estate sale all like new in the box. First one sold at auction for $127.50. So there you go, a photo of a Blessing Nun doll. And Leah asked how much he paid for them. So George, if you're listening, let us know about that. I'm sure it wasn't very much, but he bought six of them. So we'll probably see some more of these sales on future $100 supersize sales videos. And here's another regular, Ken McNamara, the pots and pans guy. Paid $8, sold for $128. He found it at a thrift store, sold in less than three hours. I knew this was a rare color and I thought I priced it reasonably, but now I think I left $30 to $40 on the table. Vintage, Le Creuset round, turquoise, blue enameled cast iron Dutch oven. That is a beautiful piece. Next up is Dee Dee Garcia. She said this was free to her. This is Erst Wilder Page, the Prancing Pink Poodle Brooch, retro 1950s. Sold for $134.50 and it was free. Lee Mowry, free from College Daughters Collection. <laughs> yeah. The uh, kids go off to college and we start selling their stuff, right? Sold for $135 for best offer. Listed at $150 for three weeks. Rare Disney Singamajig plush. Mickey and Minnie Mouse. And Lee said that the profit went to her daughter. I'm just not that mom. Okay, yes I am, just not with this sale. <laughs> And Brooke said, this is great. I didn't even know they made Disney singamajigs. So there you go. Learn something new on this one. Okay, Myra said, this is the last of these beautiful white bisque Kaiser vases I picked up at a garage sale over a year ago for $8 each. This was the most rare one, so I was happy with this price and profit. She sold this for $138. She only paid eight for it. And again, if you look at that, it, it's kind of plain looking. So if you saw that mixed in the thrift store shelves with all the other porcelain ceramic stuff, you might not think it's ultra exciting, but that's why you got to pick up everything and look at it because you just don't know. 
Now we have Lara who sold some wallpaper. She said, sold for best offer of $150 plus priority shipping. Discontinued designer wallpaper picked up from Salvation Army for $4.50 total, $0.75 cents each. Took about six months to sell. Yeah, that's a great product. Discontinued wallpaper, well, discontinued anything, but what a profit margin. <laughs> $4.50 sold for $150. Okay, now we have Eileen Cole. She said, my daughter no longer needed this camera bag, so asked me to sell it, and we split the profit. I listed it for $185 and took a best offer of $170 plus shipping after turning down several low offers. Took four months to sell. Judy asked, I've seen evermore as a key word. What does it pertain to? And Eileen said, in this case, it is the name of the model of this bag. It was just the style name. So this was something they had free in their house and sold it for $170 plus shipping. Okay, Amy, who has the cover photo this time. She says, I've been waiting for this. Found these at the thrift store. I never find Lisa Frank, but just had a feeling I needed to dig that day. Pulled out three folders. Two are harder to find, rare, and only other one listed was a single for $175 or something. I thought that was pretty steep, but I've seen crazier prices. Decided to list all three for $185. Had lots of watchers and after about a week got an offer for $169. Definitely accepted. My husband and sister were like, what? <laughs> so the item is Lisa Frank Folders Vintage 90s Groovy Fashions Lot of Three Lion Cub Rare. And these were used. So they sold for $169. Yeah, this is the kind of thing I look for in the office supplies section, and this is definitely, definitely on my bolo list. Um, speaking of bolos, I am putting together an educational product to help everybody find more bolos. That is coming later this year. It is underway, and you guys are going to love it. So just stay tuned for that. Okay, it would not be a hundred dollar supersized sales without the illustrious Casey Vetterly. He paid twenty dollars at a garage sale for this, sold for one seventy four ninety five in about eight months. The item is Patagonia Women's Dissensionist pants, new with tag, so snowboarding pants, ski pants playing in the snow pants, whatever you want to call it. Um, Mercedes said, why are they so much? And Casey said, I wish I knew. So yeah, who knows sometimes the why. All we care about is the sale price. $20 to 175 in about eight months. Now we've got Lee again. This is an interesting item. She says, my weirdest yard sale find. Paid maybe 50 cents at a yard sale. It was in a bundle box. Sold for best offer of $175. Was listed at $225 for five months. This is a vintage pharmaceutical sealed bottle. In, encapsulated in Lucite. So it's a display piece. And Ginger said, wow, that is very unusual. And Lee says... Oddly enough, one had sold a few months before I listed this for $15. So I waited before I listed this one. No other comps so I could set my price. That's the way it goes with vintage items. The less there is of something, the more it's going to be worth. And they're only going to get more valuable as time goes by. So if you have a low price competitor, you wait for that person's to sell and then you can dominate the market and ask whatever you want. If a collector wants it, they're going to pay your price. 
Julie Harden, vintage gunny sacks dress found at the bins, took a best offer of $175, took about a month and a half to sell. And Lynn Smith Connor has a similar dress, vintage gunny sacks, calico, prairie style dress. Picked this up at Goodwill last weekend for $6. Sold at auction yesterday for $182, shipping to Australia. Now, Valerie noted that Jessica McClintock, the designer of these dresses, passed away in February. So I imagine the value will only continue to go higher. And Lynn said that explains the very high prices on these. This was sold on the lower end. The fancier ones are $300 to $500. So those of you that grew up in the 70s and 80s will remember these dresses and the name Gunny Sacks by Jessica McClintock. So if you're not looking at the dresses, maybe just go look for these types because they are hot right now and selling for crazy prices. All right, we've got Casey again, $5 at the thrift store, sold for $199 in about six months. This is a Sony Sports Walkman MP3 player, and it's sealed in the package. And Betsy made a very good point. I would like to point out that he does not panic and drop his price when something doesn't sell quickly. Patience is part of the game here. Betsy, you nailed it. You cannot be in a hurry in this business. You cannot put arbitrary time frames on how long you're going to allow your items to sell because it sells when it sells. So you just have to have patience, do your research, be confident, and wait for the right buyer. Next up is Crystal, who picked this up for a dollar at an auction Friday night, listed Saturday morning, and sold within 15 minutes for full asking price, which was $199.99. This is a vintage pizzazz sheer full circle ruffle pageant dress, size 2T. A dollar, sold for $200 the next day. Julie Harden, vintage Daisy Kingdom original dress, not from a pattern. Found this at the bins, so paid maybe a quarter or so. Started the bid at $9.99. Immediately got several requests for a buy it now, which I declined. The dress was in fair, poor condition overall with spots, missing button, dingy, a definite bolo and it sold for $208.50. And Sue commented, if you find the patterns, they sell really well too. I paid 50 cents and sold in two days for $40. And Julie said, yes, I will definitely look at the patterns now. So those of you who were around in, I guess the late 80s, 90s, will remember these Daisy Kingdom patterns, dresses, accessories. That was a big thing back in the day. Now we've got Julia Marchenko who sold this 20s cloche hat by a very rare French boutique label. Paid five dollars at a private buying appointment. Sold in two days for two hundred and nine dollars on best offer. Okay, Wendy Kruger, she says, free to me, sold for $270 plus shipping, sold in two weeks. I don't post things from our parents' house on here as I didn't source any of it, but DMC is a great seller and something to keep an eye out for. The item is a lot of 543 skeins of DMC embroidery floss. And yes, this is a definite bolo. If you haven't seen the video, I will put the link below. You can check that out. But this has been a bolo for me for probably 10 years. Just these huge lots of embroidery thread. It doesn't look like much, but they're worth 
some good money as you can see here. Now we've got Julie Harden again. Amazing Goodwill find. Wasn't much there and I thought I had already looked at everything. I was about to leave then found this gem for probably $5.99. Listed it high and waited. Took about a week to sell. This is a paperweight, a beautiful art glass paperweight, signed and dated 1982. Sold for $350. If you're not looking at the screen, take a look at this. <laughs> $6 Goodwill find that sold for $350 and it's a paperweight. Now, Wendy Kruger said, great find. Not sure how your Goodwill missed the value. And Julie said, me either. They usually go over everything like a forensic team. But here we have more proof that Goodwill thrift stores cannot catch everything. Things are going to slip through. And you just have to be smarter than the people at your thrift store and be willing to look for opportunities where they're not overpricing things. In every single one of these $100 sales videos, this happens. Somebody says, I found this at a thrift store. I found this at Goodwill. They overlooked this. So I'm determined to make you a believer <laughs> and to give you the confidence you need to go out there and find these items because they're out there. Okay, now we have Natalie. She said, I bought this bag at a yard sale for $75 in October and have had quite a few low offers, but sat on it for a bit. My husband decided he loved it and started using it. I ended up accepting a $410 offer after said husband spilled a little coffee on it. I knew I needed to move it before it was ruined. This is a Gurkha Garrison briefcase, a leather briefcase. $410, and she paid $75 for it about six months ago. And finally, the last one in this video is KC, who paid $300 for this at an estate sale, sold for $1,599 in about six months. Sadly, it didn't work properly when tested, so it was sold for parts. Heaviest item I've ever shipped at 102 pounds, $106 for shipping. This is an amplifier. And there's a little bit of conversation here about the item. And Shelly said, how did you ship it? And Casey said, UPS ground. So there you have it. Another exciting episode of eBay Supersize Sales for over $100. Keep posting your finds. And I appreciate everybody who participates because we can all learn from each other. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye!